most of the relationships that we have uh, had between our tables have been one to many. Uh, and that I would say is probably going to be 99% of the relationships that you create. Um, and uh, basically what you do is you take the primary key from the main table and you add it to the one you want to connect uh, and make it a foreign key. Uh, there are other types of relationships that uh, you may encounter besides one-to-many. Uh, one-to-one, which would be um, basically one row in the table is re related to one row in, a num in another. So like an employee can have one set of benefits. That would be a one-to-one. -one. Um, and then there's many-to-many, -many, which is more problematic. Um, and that is indicates a relationship that you are going to want to break down. Uh, so an example would be um, a course can have many students and many students can take a course. So if you had course here and you had students here, it would be a many to many. So you can configure the relationships by convention. Um, if that doesn't work, you can use attributes. And if that doesn't work, you can use Fluent API, okay? And um, that is kind of the order that I would do it uh, just for ease and for speed. Uh, obviously convention is fastest, uh, attributes would be second, and then Fluent API is going to take you a little longer to configure. So what we have been doing so far uh, to indicate uh, that the tables are related, so we've been taking the primary key from one table and adding it to the second uh, entity or class as a foreign key. So how we've been doing this in Entity Framework Core is we've been adding an entry for the ID, which usually ID, um, which would be like the class name of our foreign key followed by ID. And then we do another entry, which has the class of the foreign key, a space, the class of the foreign key, and then we've got a get set. And we make this nullable. So um, in the example below, uh, you can see we have blog and post. And a blogger can make many posts. And so we are taking ID and we are adding that to post. So here we've got uh, the integer, which is the data type, blog ID. And then we've got the class name, the class name. And we've set that so that it, it can be null. Navigation properties describe the relationship between the two entity types, and they allow us to navigate from one end of the relationship to the other end. Um, so, so far we've been kind of defining the relationship as kind of a one-way thing. We've been adding basically to the many table, and we haven't been putting any entries into the primary table. And so navigation properties actually can be used to add a corresponding entry into our primary table. Okay, so principal entity is the primary table or the, the table with the primary key. The dependent entity is the one with the foreign key. And the navigation property is basically indicating, you know, how we are relating those tables. Two types of navigation properties that can be returned would be a reference object. Um, and this is if the relationship is one or zero or one, or it can be a collection. And this is if the relationship is many. Okay, so 
here with um, when we add blog ID to post, that would be a reference object because there's one. Okay, so far that's what we've been doing. Okay, so basically we've been doing this. Um, if you want to add both endpoints, then you will be adding collections to the principal entity. And that is what this is going to show. So here we have a class employee and a class department. Okay, and in our employee class, ID is the primary key. Uh, in department, ID is the primary key. One department can have many employees. Okay, so the principal entity that contains the primary key is department. Okay, and so we take department ID and we put that into employee. Okay, and so this is a reference object. And our navigation property here is department, department. And we set that equal where we make it nullable. Okay. Now, the other side of this, the other endpoint then, is that the department class, each department will have one or more employees. And so the property that symbolizes that is a collection. Okay, so you say public I collection, and then this is the class. And then you have to set it to the type of collection. So you're gonna say new, and this gets into, if you remember back in the 195 class, all of the different types of collections. So typically, you, I mean, you'll probably use hash set, you might use list. Um, a hash set has to be unique. So uh, that would mean that like for department one, I can't have two employees num numbers that are the same, okay? So that kind of makes sense here. So the type of collection that you use is going to depend on, you know, what you're doing. Um, so this little graphic just kind of illustrates this whole process. And so you can see here, the ID from department is put into employee. And then down in the department class, we have the employee collection. For a one-to-one -one relationship, um, there's several different ways that you can uh, kind of set this up, um, but you may set it up as the primary key uh, in the primary table is also a prim primary key in the uh, dependent table. You, they could have the same primary key. I will say um, that's probably not the ideal way to set it up. Uh, but you can set it up that way. Um, if you set it up that way, Entity Framer does get a little bit confused uh, because it has a hard time figuring out, okay, well, which one of these is the primary table? Um, so to help Entity Framework, you can use the key and the foreign key attributes. Okay, and so I've got an example where I did that with um, employee and benefits. And so you can see that uh, I didn't really have to do anything in employee, but down in benefits, I had to indicate that um, it's employee ID uh, that is the key for the benefits, but it's also a foreign key. Okay, and so this is how I did that. So in this case, employee and benefits has basically the same primary key. Okay, and this had to be done with data annotations. Okay, and then the navigation property here 
is not the property for a many, right? It is basically a reference that there's just one. Okay, so um, you can see that I set it up that way. So whenever you're going to do anything like this, um, where entity framework could get confused, it is super important to check uh, the database to make sure that it created the table correctly. Uh, so if you look, you can see that it did indeed use the employee ID for the primary key and also the foreign key. And as I mentioned earlier, with Entity Framework Code first, I would always try the conventions first. Um, if it gets confused, then I would add the data annotations. And if that doesn't work, then I would use the Fluent API. 